Hello. <laughs> Almost forgot to press the button then. Mm. Oh. Uh, yes, we've just gone live for the, uh, the, the very short pre-show. Yeah, I don't have like a three hour pre-show like Dave does. Um, <laughs> just go a few minutes to. Good evening chat. Who's in? We've got Jamie, uh, Chiefs in the house, Pete, Rachel, Fuzzy Ann, Leanna. Uh, I've just refreshed, so my fingers are going to come up. Aaron, uh, Robin, Monster Rob, Mad, Dave K, Rob F5, Max Strom, Elvidian Man, isn't it? Castello. Yes, hello chat. Uh, I, have, uh, I have somebody new with me tonight. Yes, I've got a new presenter. <laughs> <laughs> well, not really. It's Sam. Uh, hello, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Sav, Sav might um, she might chime in uh, uh, at some point. Yeah, she might. So she's going to be she's going to be hanging around with with I the Van Basten, know. hanging around with the Van Basten. It's a new show. Yeah, <laughs> Conk. hanging a boot with the Van Basten. Uh, See it's that kind of sounds a... like my kind of show. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hangout, hangout. In you know, uh, I won't do the northeast accent, otherwise Dave will shoot me. <laughs> You'll keep giving me bloody oranges. Um, yes. So uh, Mr. Kitson says he sees Marco. Yes, and if you look here, you'll see a, you'll see a Marco and the Savory. Oh, yes, yeah, she is. Yeah. Um, so we've got um, basically loads of stuff uh, from the Vapor Expo UK. Uh, what we was at at the weekend, uh, and I've been busily editing like. Billio, you would not believe how much time it's taken to edit this <laughs> edit this show. Um, so uh, yes, we've got lots coming up on tonight's show. It's going to be good. Um, lots of uh, lots of good stuff for you, and some little treats here and there. Yes, if you're lucky. Yeah, let me just have a quick slurp. Ah, uh, very nice, very nice. Um, so yes. Leanna says, I saw an error has occurred, had to open a new tab. Ah, well, if you can't see us, refresh. Yeah, that, that generally works. <laughs> if you can't hear us, uh, refresh. <laughs> and if you still yeah, can't hear us, seconds. then try refreshing. <laughs> yeah, that always works. It does. 15 seconds to go. 15 seconds. So if they haven't refreshed, then yeah. what can we do? Should we have the bug for the last kind of 8 seconds? Go for it. Yeah. Ah, dear me, me, good evening, good evening. It's just gone nine o'clock and it's Tuesday the 14th of July 2015. Um, I do believe it's Bastille Day in the France, yes. Um, but it's not Bastille Day in the UK, no. But if you're watching in France, happy Bastille Day, you know what I mean? It's all good. Let them eat brioche and all that kind of stuff. Um, as I said, just pre-show, I, I do have uh, Sab with me tonight. In that monitor. Oh, in that monitor, but over that side. Uh, and um, it's it's kind of a Vapor Expo special, this one. Um, for There was lots of footage as we were there for two and a half days <laughs> filming um, with uh, all our kit. And we had a right good time. Yes, we did. Um, but um, all of that, yeah, all of that and more from chat after we have uh, the old tittles. I'm going to give them the tittles quite quick this week because we've got a lot of ET for you a lot of ET yes so uh, these are tittles mm. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health Evade UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and Pure Perfection e-liquids
Yes, it's Vapor Scene with me, Mark Green. Uh, um, but tonight, one night only, Sam. Ta da! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, good evening, welcome. Um, I hope you've been having a good week uh, and you had a good weekend. And if you came to Vapor Expo, uh, this place, yes, the Vapor Expo UK, if you came down to the NEC and saw us, then uh, hello again. I hope you got a pen. We do have some pens left, and I will be bringing some pens to Vape Fest. If you didn't manage to get a pen at the last two events, come and see me at Vape Fest, and I will give you a pen. Yes. Um, and I was just seeing in chat there as the uh, titles were going. Who was it said what? Uh, Max Drum said, "I hope there was something more at the expo than just subome stuff." Me dinosaur ug. <laughs> uh, yes, there was. Yeah, um, it, there was a good mix of of uh, juice and a good mix of um, devices. Uh, of all genres and types um, from uh, all different places really it, it was it was very well attended by the um, the vendors um, strangely enough kind of the big vendors like Sigeli who went to ESIG Expo didn't go to Vapor Expo and I wonder whether they put all their eggs in one basket so to speak because it's not cheap is it uh, to fly everyone across from China plus all the kit um, so maybe what they should have done was had a vacation, stayed a few more weeks and had a vacation uh, or holiday um, and then uh, attended Vapor Expo but uh, no, but there were a, a fair few and you'll see as we go through the show on the different bits of VT um, who was there and kind of who wasn't um, and uh, the bits that were going on. It was uh, quite loud, it wasn't as loud as Vape Jam I have to say. Um, but it was quite loud in places. But we had a nice little area at the back uh, where we set our store out, had our stand. Um, so we managed to get some good bits of uh, interviewing done there. And we managed to kind of tweak the sound a little bit to uh, make it easier for you to hear. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to kick off with uh, the first part of a three part vape uh, expo. <laughs> I almost said vape jam there. Vape Expo UK special. Yes. So uh, here's the first part, uh, and uh, I'll see you after that. Do enjoy. Here we go. This is the uh, this is the queue filmed on the phone because <laughs> my camera is next to the stand. So uh, it's reasonably long, and there's 45 minutes till it opens. So uh, not too bad at all.
There's Chris. He's going to be in a robot's costume later. <laughs> Okay, I'm here today to do a trick for Matt. Okay, Matt, so I've got some cards here. Can we put the card box on the table? Do me a favour, just uh, take the cards and make sure they're all different. Okay, I'll show the camera they're all different, but I want you to go through them yourself and just make sure they're all different. Okay, hold this. And even give them a little shuffle in the process of all the game. Just give them a shuffle, give them a shuffle. <laughs> here you go, time, Matt. Well, he did ask me to check them. Yeah, get on with it. Yeah, that, can someone else just come and hold the mic for a second? Yeah, yeah, I can do that for yeah, you. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Okay, yeah, this is what I want you to do, okay? Hold the cards in your face, so you're looking at them. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to turn away. When I turn away, I want you to take out one card. Any card you want, a random card, your favourite card. Just do not let me see it after the game's over, okay? Yeah, right. Show everyone here what the card is. Keep this card out, put it in your pocket. Put the rest of the deck back in the box, okay? Right. Any card you like, then turn around now. So choose. Entirely up to you. Show the camera. Show the camera. Hold on. Good. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you got one card, yeah? Hang on, I'll put it back. Yeah, put the rest yeah, back yeah. in the box. Okay. Okay, I'm going to prove there's only one of these cards in the entire world. So, Matt, give me a favor. Put the rest back in the box. Yes. Where's the box? In my pocket. Can you have the box back? You don't need any more. What I want you to do is I want you to take your card and make sure everyone can see again, okay? I'd like you to write your signature on the face of the card or draw a picture, whatever you want to do. Just make the card your own. In fact, put it on both sides of the card, okay? Get in the stand away so you can't, so can't see. All right. Show everybody here in the camera. Mark the card however you please, okay? Just don't let me see it. <laughs> uh, I'm Debbie McGee, really, aren't I? Right. Go on then. I'll tell you what, right? I'll hold the box, right? Just slide the card face down, put it back into the deck anywhere you like, okay? Just slide it back into the deck. 
avoid all eight face down, okay? Just no matter where it goes. Just try and remember where about you put it. Has that definitely gone in? Yeah, yeah. Went in. Definitely gone in, but I'm going to close the box, okay? Here's a question for your match. Do you believe in faith? No, not particularly. You don't? No. You actually don't believe in faith at all? <laughs> this is a question of my... I'm going to show you something, okay? Watch this. In fact, could we bring the camera over here? Why don't you forget about your card for a while, okay? Okay. What I'd like to do is, I have the pack of it, I'd love to actually know what we'll do is, in fact, God, this is going to be way too long for the camera. How long have you got? As long as you need. Yeah. You're absolutely sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. this is literally going to go on for quite a bit. Yeah, go for it. That's fine. Talking, 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, fine. <laughs> and can you cut this lot, this lot last bit out as well? No. Yeah. <laughs> you will? We will. Okay, okay, here's a question. Why have you decided that I knew what card you were going to pick before I even came here today? I'd say that'd be the purpose of the trip. I'll try and give you the shortest version. Okay. What if I knew what, I knew what card you were going to pick? What if I knew what your signature was like on the front arm of that? Okay. That's increasing the odds, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You don't believe it, do you? Well, I'm, I'm, I hope they're going to do it, because that's the whole point of this. Okay, alright. Uh, I made a prediction before I came here, okay, yeah. Uh, my wallet, okay, give me a favour, just um, unzip my wallet. Take this money out. Unzip it. And can you see inside, I want to show the camera, there's actually a little piece of paper, can you see that? Can you guys see that? Yeah. There's actually a piece of paper in there. Give me a favour, just take it out. Can look at it? Yeah, you can rip it open, check it. And we're back in the studio. Hello. Yes, the magician, he was doing all kind of misdirection, said it was going to take 15 minutes for all the time. It was furtling in his pocket, sorting the card out. Um, but still, it was a very good trick. Uh, and I didn't edit that at all. That was exactly shot as it was. Um, I didn't ca move the camera all the time so I could see him because he was just slightly out of shot. But I left that exactly as I filmed it, um, just for effect. Yes, and it was rather good. Uh, and he was going around all day, uh, both days, just doing little tricks with people. Uh, and he was stood, I don't know, 30 feet away, and he had this 20 pound note in his hand, and he folded it up and did that, and it was a credit card. It was, uh, it was very clever. Very clever stuff indeed. Um, now, watching chat as that was going through, and uh, I know there was some um, issues with thefts, people stealing mods from stands, and apparently somebody having one stolen out of their back pocket. Um, what you have to remember is that although we are all vapors, there's going to be some bad ones out there, like anywhere. You could walk down the street and have someone lift your wallet or your phone or your handbag or whatever. So when you're at events like anywhere, you always make sure you've got your bits and pieces where you can feel them in your front pocket or in a you know nice zip bag in front of you, all that kind of stuff. Common sense prevails here. It doesn't deter from the fact that there are still some thieving bastards out there, and I use that word reservedly. Um, but they are going to be those kind of people wherever you go. Uh, it is a shame that uh, it happens where you feel you're part of a community. Um, but uh, as Lau mentioned in chat as well, it's it's bigger than a community now. You know, it's an industry now. What do you say, the Sam? Way I always, the way I always say it is when I first started, it was like a little village, and now it's a big town. And it happens as things grow. It's sad, but it, it's part of life. And there's not a lot you can really do about it except as you say keep aware of where your own stuff is and things but other than that I mean that's the first time I've seen that video and the magician looked brilliant but the whole thing looked fab I'm so jealous that I couldn't go it looked really really good and I think those expos are fantastic for the whole industry for everything I think it's absolutely fantastic I mean, Vape Fest is brilliant for the community and the community spirit, meeting up with your friends and all that type of thing. It's brilliant. But those expos are excellent and I hope to see them continue. 
brilliant stuff. Yeah, I've got to say, I'm you know, we're talking to the guys at the event and at the end of the event, and we all agreed that this one has, was the best so far this year. Um, you know, Vape Jam was the first one in, in this country of that type, and it was very Americanized. Uh, it, there was a lots of free stuff going around, lots of banging music, loads of vapor. It was a good event, don't get me wrong. I enjoyed it immensely. Uh, it was a it was a good do to uh, to go down to and film and stuff. Um, they uh, ESIG Expo we enjoyed as well, and you'll see later on in in the VTs um, that I, I say exactly what I'm saying now, and that is it was it was a good event. It was just under populated with people, um, probably because of where it was. A lot of people who registered didn't go, and it was free, so you know no one lost anything by registering and not going. Whereas if it had been ten pound a ticket, and they'd sold five thousand tickets, then probably, you know, most people would have turned up because no one likes to throw ten quid away. Um, but so that was a shame because it had all the possibilities of being a good event, and I had some good vendors there as well. Um, this one though, it was from the moment we saw the crowds building on the Saturday, we knew it was going to be good, um, and it it did not let us down with our expectations. And as you saw there on the VT. Uh, and from the various tweets and everything else that's been going around, uh, we had a really, really good stand. Um, we were in a really good position, and we had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people coming to the stand. And you'll see that more in the last VT of the night. Um, you'll see that a lot more, how, exactly how many people came to, to our stand. Um, let's go to the first set of ads, because uh, we've got more VT coming up. Um, with uh, Fraser Copper from Totally Wicked and um, David Drummond from Tablites and uh, other stuff too. Yes, we'll see you in two. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health Evade, UK purveyor of e cigarettes and Pure Perfection e liquids. Often imitated, never duplicated. Award-winning service and products from cloud9vaping.co.uk. And now it's back to Vapor Scene on Vapor Trails TV. Vapor Scene is sponsored by Healthy Vape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and pure perfection e-liquids. And we're back, as I just said to Sav. I said, and we're back. <laughs> and then I clicked you the did. button. And then I said, and we're back. <laughs> you did. That's exactly what you said. <laughs> it is, isn't it? That's what I said. That's exactly what you said. Yeah, she's nodding at me. Yeah, that's exactly what I said. Anyway, um, we're going to go straight into the next bit of VT, because the next bit of VT is pretty much the whole of this section of the show, um, because there's a lot of information in there. Um, have a look at the first bit. The first bit is rather funny, and then it gets rather serious. Yes. But it's all good. Enjoy this. So here we are on the sofas uh, in the uh, Vape Trolls TV 
VIP area. Yes. Uh, and it's day two of Vapor Expo here at the Birmingham NEC Pavilion. Ooh. Oh, yes. Yay! Uh, and uh, we had a, a, an extremely busy day yesterday. Didn't we not, Dave K? We certainly did. Incredibly busy. I think of all the events I've been to, this has been the busiest, but also the best, yeah. I would say. Uh, I think they've learned from the, 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 the previous couple of shows and tweaked things a bit, and it's, the format's been fantastic. Got loads of signatures for the uh, Article 20 Legal Challenge, which is one of the main objectives of being here and meeting loads of people. Giving away a few pens, haven't we? A few. So, uh, got anything to add, Dave? Sweet. Oh, yeah, hi. I've got, duh, duh, duh. It's, uh, it, it's been an eye opener, though, hasn't it? Many, many ways, yeah. I am I am actually quite astounded by the number of people who had not heard look at the camera David who had not heard of the TPD I couldn't believe it yesterday there was well over 3,000 in fact 3,500 people in here and I'm going to tell you there was way too many people didn't know about Article 20 didn't know about the TPD all they knew about was big clouds and I know nothing of those big clouds what are they doing I, there's a few big clouds outside. Do you see the weather segue then? Into the, the fact the weather's good. The weather is a little bit. The weather is a little bit rainy this morning. It's um, raining, man. It's not raining, man, Dave. It's raining, man. <laughs> As you can tell, <laughs> we were imbibing last night. Uh, and those of you who. Those of you who follow me on Twitter or follow Dave on Twitter would have seen some pictures of a lovely pint of lager with a slice of orange on it. it and I might, I might even put it up in the middle of this VT so you can see the shocking way that I'm treated by this team. Get, get Matt Gerrish, over to you. Get the mate off him, Matt, he's rambling. If there's one thing we've learned this weekend, Marco is A, a very big Neil Diamond fan, and B, loves oranges. He's very keen on orange. He is. The colour of your mug, Marco. I'll just remove my mug, Johnny. Yeah, if you didn't come to this, this event, uh, Totally Wicked was selling everything 50% off. EV VT's 42 quid. And 50p. And, and 50p, sorry. 42 pound, 15 exactly. Do you know what's it? Yes. Oh, thank you, Marco. Thank you. Uh, and they come with their own little mod Johnny, which is very nice. Yes, I'm just slipping it back on again. We don't want any. Um, uh, the end we, we, we don't want any. We don't want any juice escaping, um, which would cause <laughs> unnecessary actions. Um, so as you can tell, it's, um, it's actually quarter to ten. The doors open very, very shortly. Fifteen the, minutes. Yeah. Well, actually, it's uh, seventeen minutes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so. There's a so queue. Live when you said it was quarter to ten. Oh, shut up! It's quarter. Eyes, it's quarter ten ish, <laughs> and the the queue is just absolutely massive. It's sold out again today. Um, so so for us, it's been uh, shut up. For us, it's been a uh, it's been a really good uh, really good first day. We're looking forward to today, um, and it's going to be as busy we hope. Um, and if you have got a time machine. Um, Go back to Harrogate and get a free pen because there probably won't be any left by the time we leave today. And get him an orange. I don't want an orange. I do not want an orange. I might even edit this out so any reference to orange is bleeped out. Yes. Um, but Neil Diamond, Neil Diamond was on at the NEC last night and there was a lot of people at the... Sweet Caroline. Yeah, so we've been doing that this morning. Um, so yes, that's, a, that's enough from us for now and uh, we will see you during the show, yes. Where it began, do, 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 do. I can't begin to know it, but then I know it's going strong. Uh, and that will probably get us picked up by YouTube with a, with a copyright Glass. with a copyright strike. <laughs> Reach it out. <laughs> Screwing you, <laughs> screwing me. <laughs> oh dear. Bye for now. So, I'm sat here today with Fraser Cropper of Totally Wicked, the progenitor of the Article 20 Challenge. Progenitor. The challenge 
the progenitor, that's the word I'm using good today. Word. It's, it's a good word. And how is that going? How is the whole challenge to the Article 20 thing happening? Well, we're somewhat stalled at this stage that we knew we would stall at, which is waiting for a date to have our case heard. We've received in the past two months the feedback or the submissions, to be more precise, from the EU Commission and two uh, other member states uh, with their position, which was an absolute tome many, many more pages than they should have submitted. So that's taken us a long time to go through. Um, that will then be very influential into how we then frame the oral submission that we make when we get our hearing toward the end of this year. Uh, and very much what we expected, actually, uh, with the, the general position for the EU Commission is, it's all fair and reasonable. You know, what's the matter with the TPD? It's reflecting the needs of the sector. It's light regulation that can be simply and practically interpreted and applied and of course we know beyond that noise level is fundamentally not that. So our, our, our legal challenge must be able to fish, a deep, fish deep into that and pull out these things that we know are the fundamental things that, that are wrong, it's disproportionate. There is no basis of risk, that there's been a manifestation of something which has been based upon a risk that doesn't exist, that there's no need for it to be associated to, to tobacco products and fundamentally it is not allowing for this sector to be what this sector should be allowed to be. If we get a set of judges who are well read in, who are able to see beyond the noise of these submissions for the European Union, I think we'll have a fair hearing, and if we have a fair hearing, we must be successful. Well, you're talking about a fair hearing. Um, Linda McAvan was quite public about saying that she was going to try and get support to have Totally Wicked's case thrown out. What do you make of that? What do I make of it? I, I need to be a bit more choice than maybe my brother would have been. What do I think of it? I think she should let due process do what due process does. If she is content that what she supported and led is fit for purpose, what on earth has she got to fear? That, that, I must admit, that was the question that came to my mind. If she was so confident that what she'd done was right, why does she feel the need to serry the ranks of those that are opposed? Uh, the, the democracy that elects people, I miss McAvan, is a democracy that allows for people to challenge what these elected officials do. If she doesn't like it, she can always retire. Do you know, I really like your diplomacy. Well, she can. I've got, I've got no issue with McAvan or anybody else like her. I've got issue with politicians who seem to act in ways which are atypical to that which we should expect. I would agree, I would agree. So, right, roadmap for Totally Wicked between here and whenever this gets heard, because it's supposed to be heard towards the end of the year, isn't it? Yeah, it is, towards the end of the year. Well, there's lots of other stuff going on as well. There's uh, the TPD implementation, which is happening parallelly. That's a, a real dichotomous position for us to find ourselves in. What we can't allow to do is to allow that hair to go off and running uncontrolled, so we've got to be influencing that as well. So we are, along with other parts of the sector, unfortunately there's lots of tobacco involved in this as well, influencing the DG Santo implementation team. Uh, we routinely go to Brussels to support them with the consultation piece. And what we've seen actually is, is more reassuring than probably we first thought we would see. We're seeing an organisation in the European Union that we believe is struggling to make, as I mentioned to you earlier, this circle fit the square. Uh, they are listening. I think they want to do what they can to try and, yes, comply with the TPD, but also reconcile those irreconcilabilities and listen to industry. What we have to make sure is that the industry voice is the industry voice, not a very narrow section of that which purports to be industry. Yes. And we find a lot of influence that comes from companies that have been purchased by tobacco companies. They've got the depth of pockets and the capacity to resource these things. And I think they're getting a disproportionate influence and disproportionate volume to what they have to say. That's a risk. People have got to be aware of that. There are commercial imperatives in play here. Some very embedded, deep, monopolistic commercial imperatives. Uh, and just because you're an e-cigarette company doesn't mean necessarily you've got the right to have a say in things which are going to exclude the vast majority of e-cigarette companies and vendors and more importantly, not do with the regulation that the consumers need to be done with it. Yes. When, when you're talking about regulation, we heard a couple of weeks ago that the, uh, the company, or the university responsible for coming up with the, uh, the specifications for the leak-free refilling mechanism based in Athens, how inappropriate that seems at the moment, 
uh, but apparently they're not going to be reporting back until June. Where does that leave the industry in terms of trying to cope with the message that's come from Brussels that you've got to have all of this, they just haven't got it designed? What well, does that mean? Well, in the obvious limbo, uh, there's no consolidated approach. There's a tacit assumption, obviously, that this legal challenge will be unsuccessful. I think there has to be, realistically, a plan for the TPD, both if we're successful and if we're not successful. Yes. I don't think there's a plan for if we're successful. Uh, there's definitely a plan that we are not going to success for the TPD will be implemented. It'll be implemented in a real blistered, peculiar, non-coordinated way, as example by what you just mentioned. There's a whole range of things beyond that which aren't all brought together into a neat package either. The UK implementation team, I'm not quite sure what mandate that's been given. The consultation document came out last week. We've got two months to consult across a very disruptive summer period as well. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what kind of motives they've got as well and, and how open they are to potentially drawing on some of those hanging threads and seeing what indeed the TPD can be morphed into. Are they willing to take a position that the TPD is impractical and needs some adjustments? How much latitude and how much leadership will the UK government therefore apply? I don't know. I really don't know. But we do know there's lots of national implementation teams all doing their own national stuff under the auspice, which is apparently the macro EU, EU TPD. So I don't really, I mean, we'll work close to it, and I still don't know myself how on earth it's going to all happen. I've got to say, I, I honestly can't see harmonisation working. Not when the skittles are falling at, at strange rates, when you've got home nations or member nations doing things their own way. And it just doesn't appear that there's any joined up thinking, but there wasn't any from the start. Well, there wasn't, uh, and it's, uh, it's testament to the TPD that it is such a bloody mess. If the TPD was a simply understood, practically delivered, and relevant and necessary piece of legislation, I think it would have been easy to implement it. It's because it's such a monstrosity that doesn't fit that you can't bring it all together into a neat package because it's never going to be neatly packaged. No, no. So, exactly so right. you know, the, the, the reciprocation back to people like Miss McEvan is look at the bloody mess. And it is a bloody mess. It's a dog's breakfast. It is. And, and once again, let's not be seen as this belligerent part of the sector that is not willing or, ina or is unable to take its responsibilities. You know, I, I, I take that on the chin routinely and I absolutely bloody refute it. Our business and other businesses like ours know there is a need for regulation. This sector needs regulating. I want regulation. Yes. If nobody's going to regulate it properly, I'll do it myself for our own business. And there's some good things happening. The BSI pass, credit to ECTA and all those who contributed. Yes. A voluntary document which tries to take a proper risk-based, ground-up approach to defining a standard. But it's not a difficult standard to meet. It's not an easy one. It's an appropriate one. Yes. It'd be difficult for those industries who don't want to invest yes. in their responsibilities. Yes. It'd be easy for those industries that have a long-term view, because it's the only thing they should be doing. It's absolutely demanding for the consumer to know there is something that sets the data of acceptability. At the moment, we haven't got that, so consumers must also demand regulation. But don't believe, just because the TPD is orchestrated through this enormous body, which is the EU, it's looking after your best interests, because it can't be in this case, because it doesn't. So regulation, categorically, yes, it is needed. Regulation that is based upon a super risk assessment that manages the risk for consumers, absolutely needed. That holds industry to account for what they should be doing, which is being open and honest with their customers, taking responsibility for the safety of their products and selling in an ethical way, absolutely. The TPD, unfortunately, does not do that. So let's not fall into the trap. It is regulation, therefore it's good regulation. No, yes. it's bad regulation, couched as good regulation. Yes, it's the very worst. It it's is. the very worst. And just as a final question, if I was to put you on the spot and say what was the probability that the challenge to Article 20 was going to succeed in a percentage terms, where would you place it? It's a difficult one. Uh, Fifty-fifty at the moment, I would suggest. 50, 50. And that sounds really equivocal, uncommitted. But I can't be any more of them, being honest. Okay. And a final, final question. Yeah. Signatures, support for it. How important? Really important. The signature is important, but just as important is, I think, the discourse that happens around those signatures. 
people have got to understand the threat. There's a bit of a phony war going on at the moment. 2013, when vapors were up in arms, communicating with MEPs, NMPs, that's all disappeared. So to communicate the TPD legal challenge without firstly getting people aware again of why it's happening, then we've got our skittles in the wrong order. We've got to get more people informed of what the TPD is going to do to get them then to understand, ah, that's the reason why. It's not belligerent industry. It's a responsible part of this industry that is not willing to accept punitive, unbalanced and disproportionate regulation. So the more people in industry and vapors who can communicate to all those people who need to be understanding this, formally to MEPs and MPs, but just as importantly to their friends and family who are interested in this matter. Read the TPD, Article 20, it's only five or six pages, it's actually quite understandable. Understand it, apply that awareness that you've created to other people and start to communicate with those people who are willing to listen. But there's lots of people who are willing to listen. Yes. Lots of good MPs, lots of good MEPs who have invested the time, who are real advocates for this sector and for the consumer's needs. Yes. And if we can convince those people, those right-minded politicians, then it's because we've got a good message. So let's communicate it more often to more people. Indeed, I think you're absolutely right. So thank you so much for taking the time to come and talk to us. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our poncetta tree, which doesn't exist. It's, yeah, it's, a kind of, it's one of those bastard jars, excuse my French, of a, a tree that presents itself as a flower. Yes, but it's red. It is. And, and I'm overdressed as well today, Dave. I know I would have come in shorts and t-shirt, but uh, I wasn't aware. With your baseball cap on backwards? Uh, maybe. Got, get with the clouds, bro. Get with the clouds. Oh, I couldn't cover that very well. <laughs> but, pleasure there, thank you. Lovely, thanks. Cheers. 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 Bye -bye. Hi, day two at the NEC Vapor Expo, and I'm sat here with David Drummond from Tablites. Um, David, this, there's been a lot of talk lately about juice, and Tablites has taken quite a major step in the whole diacetyl acetyl propionyl sticks. What's been going on? Well, we've had to, really. I mean, at the beginning of this week, or last weekend even, we realized that some of our American juices had tested badly, and, and we felt that. The only thing to do at that point was to take a stance and to say, look, we've got a lot of inventory in stock, but we're no longer going to sell it. I mean, the general public outside of here really doesn't know about all of this stuff. And we look at it at Tab Lights as being our responsibility to make sure that if we know something, then we've got to get that word out there. So we, we immediately pulled everything we felt was testing badly. Um, and have been scrambling for a week to uh, replace it. And, and this show has really helped too. Um, but yeah, we are in the process of making sure that whenever you buy a juice, um, we're gonna have the test results and they'll be right there so you'll see it. And we know that 80% of the people that come into our shops are not even gonna know um, really what the problem is or what the uh, potential issue is. But, you know, as a member of ACETA as well, you know, we said, look, we. we you know, we need to do the right thing. We need to, as we find more information out, we need to be able to get that out there to the public as quickly as possible. And if that means we've got to take a wash on inventory or we have to try and figure out how to do it, then we'll certainly do everything that we can. Uh, but yeah, corporate policy. You don't have the test results, we don't stock your juice. So you say that, that, that your customers are going to be aware of what the test results are. How are you going to be doing that? Well, we're going to, you know, uh, Enjoy has done a fabulous brochure with all of their liquids. We're going to take a uh, take something out of their book and say, look, um, we're going to make sure that on all the counters um, you can see all the results that you want want to see. So we will publish that as they start to uh, come in. But they'll certainly be available in store. They'll be available online. Uh, they'll be available, you know, right in front of us. But it's also, you know, it's also sort of an education process as well, isn't it? Where you know, a lot of people aren't really going to realize it. I mean, you can see people here today that are that are buying juice that, uh, you know, I mean, I know we won't even stock anymore. And they're free to do that. That's absolutely fine. But they should know. They should understand. I've been talking to customers all day. And, and you know, people do look at you, even here where you've got a very educated consumer. You've got people here that really don't know. They really don't understand it. And I think they care when I bring it up to them. They certainly care. Well, that's, 
that's brilliant news and it's a good step. What's the next stage from there? Is there one or, or, or is the publication of a booklet with all of the information in about the whole range, is that going to be enough? Well, it's going to be an ongoing process, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, we don't know what's coming down the line next, but as soon as we as soon as we find out something, then we're going to have to react to it. And we've realized that. I mean, we sat there for 24 hours, scratching our heads, listening to various stories out there going, well, you know, uh, people should have a choice. Yeah, they should have a choice. But you know what? As a, as a responsible retailer, when we know that a high degree of our customers don't know, we have to tell them. We have to let them know that that's, that's what's happening. And, and, and as we get more information about other test results or other things that may be there, we'll certainly have to react in exactly the same way. Um, so, you know, I mean, I just think that's the responsible way to do it. We're on the ground, we're on the, on the, on the bottom rung here, serving people day after day, you know, that are coming in, uh, still using, you know, um, you know, stage two devices. And, and, and you know what, they like that and that's great, but they need to know that the juice that they're going to get from us is going to be as, uh, as uh, safe as possible. Self-regulation in action. I think so, yeah. I mean, it just seems right, doesn't it? Yeah, it certainly does, and I agree with you. And I applaud the stance that you've taken. Oh, David, well, thank thanks you. very much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you, cheers, David. man. Okay, cheers. And we are back with me. Hello. Uh, apologies for the uh, the issues there at the beginning of the uh, the VT. No idea what the heck happened. Um, but uh, it was important that you saw the entire interview there with Fraser Cropper because uh, that man talks sense. He knows what he's talking about. And let me tell you, he had no idea what Dave Dorn was going to ask him or throw at him at all. We just sat him down, pointed some cameras at him, and Dave went, there you go, because he is a professional interviewer. Yes, indeed. Let's go to the ads, because we've got a bit more to come from Vapor Expo UK. We'll see you in two. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health eVape. UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and Pure Perfection e-liquids. Vapors, Dripper just got 40% bigger. So if you love discovering new e-liquids, tell Dripper what flavours you like and we'll send you 70ml of juice and at least 5 flavours. With a money back guarantee and free delivery anywhere in Europe, dripper.co.uk. What's in this eSig cloud? Harmless water vapour, right? Pretty much, yes. Compared to a lit cigarette, it's much safer than smoke but it contains nicotine. And nicotine on its own isn't toxic and doesn't cause cancer. If you're worried about switching to vapor, here are some facts. No tar, no smoke, no burnt tobacco. Cooking your evening meal produces more toxins than are found in exhaled vapor. Tobacco smoke contains toxins at very high levels and vapor does not. And that vapor contains 6,000 times less carcinogens than cigarette smoke. Electronic cigarette vapour. There's nothing to be frightened of. The only dangerous electronic cigarette is a banned one. And now it's back to Vapor Scene on Vapor Trails TV. Vapor Scene is sponsored by Healthy Vape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and Pure Perfection e-liquids. And we're back to the studio again. We are going to crack on. We're going to crack on. So uh, get ready for part three of the uh, Vapor Expo package that I have put together. Yes, uh, this is a bit shorter. Mm -hmm. See you in a bit.
Guys, we're here at uh, Vapor Expo at the NEC day two. Uh, and you remember on the ESIG Expo show, we met Sam from Atom and we showed you the Blaze and the Viper, the two very small Ego style sub ohm devices, uh, which uh, kick some serious vapor out. Sam has got a couple of new devices that are going to be new on the market for VapeFest. Uh, and I've got to tell you, we are rather excited. Sam, tell us a bit more about the two new devices. Okay, so, hi guys, this is our latest introduction to the market. It's called the Revolver. It's got an assassin tank on it with two adjustable airflow pods in there. We've got a titanium Clapton coil with gold contact points and a telescopic tank there that you can adjust the airflow. Do you want to give it a go? Let me swap hands, Sam. Yeah, no worries. You've got warm hands, mate. <laughs> I've got a warm heart as well. As you can see, and here we have, they produce. Here we have the latest addition to our range. It's called the Fat Boy. Fat Boy has a 4,200 mAh battery on it. The tank is exceptionally big for those big time dripper vapors, people who actually enjoy the mod. Uh, it's got LED lights on it to give you battery count. It's got the changeable airflow on the bottom there. Have, have a go on that. It's also got a six mil capacity on the tank, uh, which is a rather lot of juice, which is good for me, because you know me, I do like my tanks. As you can see, this one produces too. This is the only one in the country at the moment. It's a prototype. Sam's going to take this away. He's getting some artwork done. Tell us about the artwork, Sam. OK, so the artwork, we've uh, actually commissioned Darren Cullen, the first graffiti artist registered in the UK, to do all the artwork behind this product. We actually have the artwork here. Let me see, can you zoom in on that? That's the finished product there. If you can see the artwork, uh, it's all designed and made by Darren Cullen for us here at Atom and we hope to release this before VapeFest um, this year coming up. Um, really excited about this product coming to market. We also have our mods coming to market as well. And like I said, look out for Atom, we're here to stay. Sam, always a pleasure. Thank you. We'll see you at VapeFest. Absolutely, thank, thank you very much. Day two here at uh, Vapor Expo in Birmingham, NEC. Uh, and you may have seen David from Elements before on some of the VTs we shot at uh, Vapor Expo. Um, and you would have definitely seen Nikita um, from the stand, who, uh, who featured in one of my VTs there. Uh, I've been trying a lot of the Elements juices, and uh, I thought it'd be nice to have a little chat, so you can tell us a bit, a bit more. Yes, um, we're based in Miami, uh, Florida. Uh, we've been making juices for a little bit over a year. We have two ranges, a traditional 50-50 range, and then of course our dripping range which is probably the most popular we've been doing that for a while now we've been doing that for almost since uh the inception of the of, of our company is is the drip range what's what's your kind of biggest seller i mean some of the flavors um <laughs> are very tasty i have to say pink lemonade for Correct. instance I, I would say that there's just no question about it. In the UK, uh, Pink Lemonade is definitely uh, the number one bestseller, but followed very closely behind with uh, Key Lime Cookie, uh, Strawberry Whip, uh, and Fresh Squeeze. Uh, the Fresh Squeeze is, is an orange, very difficult flavor to master, and we've, we've totally mastered, we've really mastered uh, the citrus flavors uh, for sure. And so um, Pink Lemonade is the number one guy here. That's what really kind of shot us uh, into fame here, but really um, the other ones are really coming up very strong. Key Lime Cookie is coming up very strong lately. Yeah, I do have some Key Lime Cookie, um, which is in my <laughs> in my other bag. So uh, I'll have to try that again later. Uh, the Pink Lemonade, is it's, it's very zingy, it's very fresh, um, and also the strawberry whip, is, uh, it's got a really nice sweet taste to it. If you do like a sweet vape, uh, then Elements Juice for me, it, 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 that's the one you should look at. Um, it's, uh, it vapes extremely well, I have to say. Um, what are your plans for the future? Have you got uh, more flavors on the go? Um, you know, when we, when we first came out with Element, we, we had the Dripper series and we had nine flavors. And that was because there wasn't that many Dripper companies out there, especially not in the UK. Um, but now what we're seeing is that now that there's new brands coming out, people are a little weary of buying when they want to, when they call us up and they're saying, hey, I've heard about your line, I want to buy it. And they find out we have nine or 10 flavors. 
it's not off-putting, but they always ask us, what are your top five flavors or whatever it is? Um, so now what we're doing, instead of adding to the element range, we're coming out with a new, uh, a new brand. Uh, it's gonna be branded, everyone's gonna know it's made by us, but it's gonna be a new uh, name under new brand. And we'll probably start that line off with about four flavors. And um, we've been actually sampling it here, just kind of getting an idea of, of, of what people are liking. Uh, pink grapefruit is, is one of the ones that we know we're going with, and we've been having people sample it, and, and people are loving it. And so we're, we're excited about it. We know it's gonna do very well here. We feel like we understand the palate uh, of the UK. Uh, they want flavors that hit them in the face. They want they want a, a very creamy, milky vape, um, and I think we deliver on, on all those. Yeah, I've got to say, I find the, the American juices to be quite highly flavored. Um, some are really strongly flavored. Yeah. Uh, which is good for dripping. Um, I don't particularly drip that much. Um, I use tanks. So would you say that your juices are as good to go into tanks as well as dripping? Yeah, you know, we, we formulated it for high, for, for, for high, um, for high wattage, just high heat, all that kind of stuff. But the reality is that more and more we're starting to see that uh, people are using these sub-tanks. In fact, what we did was just to, we get that question all the time. So what we did uh, at this show specifically was we showcase all of our liquids in tanks because we always get that. Since our since our logo has an actual coil with a dripper on it, people think that it's only made to actually drip on, on, on coils and cotton. Uh, so what we did is that we brought in some mini sub tanks, all these different types of like sub ohm tanks to show people that you can get all the flavor, all the production um, out of a tank. So we, 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 we just look at it as, as, as a sub ohm kind of liquid. Yeah, uh, and they do produce. I have to say, they do produce uh, some very nice clouds uh, in my sub tanks, uh, which is what I primarily use these days. Um, I, I have quite a few of them, uh, and I've just picked up the uh, the the, the Evic uh, VT60. Um, so it's it's going quite nicely now as well. Yeah, we the Evic uh, that, that Evic. Uh, there's a guy named Vaping with Twisted 420. He's a very well known guy. He's got over 100,000 YouTubes, um, and he called me up and he said, "Have you have you watched my new review on the Evic?" And I was like, "Okay." And we started watching it, and he, he's, a, he's a hardware guy, but he showcased our liquid on it, and I just actually picked up one myself. You know, I was in the moment. I was like, wow, this guy's talking about our liquid. So I went and I bought one, and, and they're pretty outstanding, right? I like the orange one. The colors are awesome. Yes, we've all got orange ones. <laughs> we all bought orange they're, ones. They're like, they look like a car, right? They're like shell candy or something. They're beautiful. Well, it, it reminds us of uh, Transformers. Yeah, the, exactly. Bumblebee. Yeah, and they're, yeah, yeah. And they're shiny. You know, they're... You know everything's like matte and whatever, but these are like they got like this gloss on them. They're they're gorgeous, you know. Yeah, they're not designed for stealth vaping, no, really. No, I don't think so. <laughs> no. Well, David, thanks so much for oh, dropping in and, and seeing us. Uh, we we took a while catching up with you, um, but thanks a lot for coming to see us. I appreciate it very much. Thank Cheers. you very much, Marco. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm still with Sam at uh, Vapor Expo NEC day two, uh, and uh, he's got this rather marvelous uh, Atom branded electric bike. Sam, tell us all about this. This is once again uh, a product that we've uh, introduced to the UK market. It's uh, a lightweight titanium bike. It's uh, fully rechargeable, goes 50 miles up to 40 kilometers an hour. Um, got an LED light there, full braking system, and it's a pack-up model. Here on top of the uh, Atom is our birthday box where you've got the full range with an in-car holder and a carrying case that you can use at your leisure. Really, I think um, the introduction by Atom is just to really introduce our product range and show you that we're doing something different. And it's rather spanking, don't you think? I, I, I agree with you on that. <laughs> Sam, like I said, always a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thanks, mate. Thank Cheers. You. So, this is me driving back to South Yorkshire from uh, Vapor Expo at the NEC Birmingham, where the team has been for the past two and a half days. We've had an absolutely cracking time. We've seen lots of mods. We've tasted lots of juice. I've got uh, plenty of juice to uh, go through over the coming weeks before Vape Fest. And let me tell you, um, Vapor Expo UK has been the best show of the year thus far. It was absolutely stonking. The official numbers are something like uh, 3,900 and something, 3,952 I think it was on Saturday. Uh, and they were sold out again today. So they've probably had in the region of six and a half to 7,000 vapors through the doors 
over the past two days, uh, which has been absolutely amazing. There's been no major issues, there's been plenty of ventilation for the vapours. Um, it's been quite warm, I have to say. It did rain this morning, um, but uh, the weather has kept up rather nicely. Uh, and I think it's taken everybody by surprise just how um, good it has been. Um, so all power to Jay and to Lee, who've done all the organising for this. They've done a cracking job. Um, so what's next? Well, next is Vapefest, and I am looking forward to that like you could not believe. It's just, it, a year would not be complete without Vapefest. Um, so I'm looking forward to that immensely. Uh, and especially because this year there's also going to be live music uh, and it's going to be a really different vibe uh, and it's going to be more like a festival uh, and that is going to be so good. So Vapor Expo has been marvellous. Um, Vape Jam was very, very good. Uh, it's different vibe. Um, so many more clouds <laughs> at, at uh, Vape Jam. ESIG Expo was really good and, and Dave Kitts and Dave Dolan and myself really enjoyed our time at uh, ESIG Expo. It's a shame that that was uh, a little bit low on numbers, um, but uh, I think it was mainly because of where it is uh, that that was the, uh, the issue. Um, but it still was a good exhibition. Um, but Vapor Expo UK ha has, uh, has surpassed everything thus far. Um, so I'm hoping that if we can get the community together, get people to sign the petition, get people behind it, get the information out there and we can overturn this crazy legislation that is due to come into force on May the 20th, 2016, then we can have the same shows again next year but bigger and better and really um, bring it more to the front, more to the fore, get it out there. If 7,000 people want to come to a, an exhibition at the weekend, then, you know, next year it could be 14,000. Who knows? So um, I'm going to carry on driving. I don't want to get arrested for uh, recording as I drive. Um, so uh, I will see you back in the studio. Yes.
And there you go, uh, finishing off with two days of Vapor Expo UK in three minutes and 43 seconds, uh, courtesy of the time lapse camera that I set up on both days. <laughs> now, Dave K mentioned in chat there, um, great that bit worked, because what he did was he stood in front of the camera motionless for like two minutes, because it was recording only six frames a minute. So I slowed that bit right down for you, Dave K. <laughs> Just so you could see yourself. Um, yes, that was kind of really, you could see on that uh, on that last bit of VT just how many people were there. Um, you know, it was taking one shot every 10 seconds. Um, so you could see the amount of people that were, that were through the doors on both days. And uh, we all had a great time. Um, what did you think of all that, Sav? It looked fantastic. It really did. And it looked like everyone had a really good time. And the interviews were brilliant. Some of the things people were saying were really, really good to hear. And I'm so jealous I never got to go. Because it just looked like you had a great time. And I wanted to have a go on the scooter. Ah, uh, <laughs> yes. You'll have, to, you'll have to come to the next, the next ones, if there are any next year. Uh, and we were talking to uh, the organisers after the event. Uh, and we said, if, you, if you're going to do it next year, do it before the 20th of May. Because there's either going to be a celebration or a blowout for the TPD on the 20th. Um, so you never know. Watch this space. We've still got another one to come. We've got Vape Fest to come next month. Um, and I'm so looking forward to that. Everything's booked and everything is ready to go. I shall charge my batteries uh, and take my mini fridge, which came in handy at the weekend, didn't it, lads? Yes. Um, <laughs> and B, yes, you were there. You were, you were there quite a lot, B. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Chief also said uh, it looked like he didn't do anything because you didn't actually see him much on camera. But Chief was working tirelessly in the background, you know, getting hundreds of people to sign the uh, petition over in the corner where we had them and giving out pens and such like. So uh, we all had our roles to play and uh, we all had our ham and cheese roles as well. <laughs> Courtesy of Mr. Van B. Yes. Um, so... Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Um, don't forget, tomorrow night it's going to be Matt Gerrish. Uh, and then there's no show on Thursday. Not entirely sure what we're going to do on Monday. But it looks pretty much like for the next couple of months it's going to be myself and Matt. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, and then we'll throw in a show here and there if we can. Um, as Dave is going on his holly bobs um, tomorrow morning <laughs> for five weeks. Um, so uh, we will, we'll see what we can bring you over the summer months. Uh, until we have our big, our big start again in September, we will see you. We will see you soon. Say good night, Sav. Good night, Sav. <laughs> good night, guys. Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you next week. Tomorrow, I'm going to Scotland. Yes, tatty bye. Proudly sponsored by Health Evade. UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and Pure Perfection e-liquids.